Now with Alvin Kamara's recent court case that could be causing him to be sentenced to one to five years in prison for his current charges that he's facing, things are going to begin to get very interesting as his upcoming court trial begins on March 8th. We now have the other three suspects arrested that were involved in going after Darnell Green at the Las Vegas club on Pro Bowl weekend. One of them happens to be Kansas City Chiefs cornerback Christopher Lamonts. Now I have so much information to share with you about Alvin Kamara's case. Let's get straight into it. And if you ever were a fan of Alvin Kamara, leave a like on the video. I'm curious how many fans are watching today. Now, of course, as we know, Alvin Kamara was the first of the four men to be identified and arrested for this altercation that took place in a club in downtown Las Vegas over Pro Bowl weekend. Now, it's very important to know the newly released suspects that have been apprehended. Most importantly, it has just been released that Christopher Lamonts of the Kansas City Chiefs was identified in the security footage from that club when it all went down. So as of right now, he is playing cornerback for the Kansas City Chiefs, but he will be heading into free agency in this upcoming offseason season, but it's very interesting to hear that another NFL player was involved in this situation with Alvin Kamara. The Las Vegas detectives actually did quite a lot of work in order to find out that this was Chris in the club. Now on the photo you see on screen, you can see plenty of images that the law enforcement used in order to determine that it was Chris. In this statement they said and I quote, Christopher Lamonts was located in social media accounts. Throughout recent photos that were posted by Chris, they were compared to video surveillance from the Cromwell on that night of the incident. Below are comparisons between the two. Lamonts is seen having the same hairstyle, as well as a marking on his right cheek, which is also seen in the video surveillance. Lamonts is seen in social media photos wearing the same necklace and bracelet as in the surveillance footage. So the detectives would have probably been able to identify Christopher just from seeing his face and his hair in the security footage as he is an NFL player and is noticeable. But they even went into detail to match up his jewelry that he was wearing on that night and it just goes to show you that there is absolutely no question that it wasn't Christopher Lamonts on that night. And well, just recently on Thursday, February 17th, Christopher had now turned himself into law enforcement and now went through the process of talking to Las Vegas detectives on the situation. Christopher has also now been given a court date sometime throughout March, which will be upcoming very soon. The other two men involved with Kamara and Christopher during this situation has also been identified. After detectives had more time to work on the case, they were able to pick out the two individuals. They go by the name of Percy Harris and Darren Young. They were also arrested on February 15th. It's not public knowledge as of yet on what each of these men did exactly during the altercation at the club, but all four men, including Kamara and Christopher, are all being charged with the same charge that could all be landing them into prison for one to five years. Now getting into the actual law enforcement on their statement of the Kamara situation, this information has just been released today at the time of this recording. They shared an in-depth interview with Darnell Green, which is the man that was affected from the situation. A Vegas detective spoke with Green and a recorded interview while at the hospital. Throughout Green's interview, he says he was still very shooken up from the situation, but he was able to recollect from the incident and he definitely described one of the suspects practically to a T. But he also mentioned that it all happened so fast and he couldn't really remember what else. Green goes on to state that he was on his way to leaving the club for the rest of the night. It was time for him to head home as he wanted to watch the Pro Bowl the next day. He was making his way up to the elevator. There was a group of men standing and waiting at the elevator to open and as soon as the elevator doors opened and Darnell Green started a conversation with somebody near the back of the group, the group then started walking into the opened elevator doors. Darnell Green started following behind them but as soon as the group made their way into the elevator, one male in the group who was later identified to be Saints running back Alvin Kamara put his hands on Green's chest, stopping him from walking into the elevator. A small conversation then occurred. Green then pushed Kamara's hand off of his chest, and then he was pushed so hard by the entire group, causing him to stumble backwards. 
He states that he began getting hit by multiple people and lost consciousness. The only one in the group that Green is able to remember is described as being a male in his 20s, approximately 5 foot 10, muscular, and had either dreadlocks or braided hair. The suspect was also wearing a grey shirt or a grey sweater. Now that one description alone makes you kinda think it's probably Alvin Kamara. Not only is it bad enough that Kamara was involved in this situation to begin with, but law enforcement after their interview with Darnell Green had an idea of what happened. They then went over to the club where this all went down, asked for the security footage, and they later then watched it at the police station. And it turns out Alvin Kamara was the man who initiated everything. Alvin Kamara was later then arrested and he even played in the Pro Bowl just the day after somehow. We're still kind of figuring out how the NFL even allowed that happening, but that's honestly one of the most surprising facts about this court case. Not only had Kamara been in a brawl just one day before the Pro Bowl, but then he woke up the next day and just went on like nothing even happened, and then continued to play in the Pro Bowl and just acted completely fine. There's been rumors that supposedly the NFL already knew about his ongoing arrest warrant, but it's almost like they didn't really care and they still just allowed him to play football anyway. Camaro was then caught up with the Las Vegas football stadium and he had law enforcement waiting outside and that's where they ended up arresting him and then brought him in for this case. Supposedly Kamara recalls that Darnell Green had said some sort of bad words to one of his friend. It could have been the man he was having the conversation with while waiting for the elevator door. And that could have been what caused the brawl to happen. But in my personal opinion, I don't think Alvin Kamara wanted to be in a closed elevator with a man that he didn't know. But it still hasn't been confirmed yet so I don't want to say what really happened. But Kamara was obviously released from jail the next morning because he posted his 5000 dollar bond. He was assigned a court trial date on March 8th and right there is when he's going to have to attend and tell the judge everything that happened and hopefully he doesn't have to face severe consequences for this situation. Coming from online lawyers that look through this case, the current charge that he is facing has a potential prison time of 1-5 to five years in prison. But in my opinion, there's always the possibility he could just pay off the damages and then give Darnell Green a lump sum of money that way Kamara never sees the inside of a prison cell. Now if you know anything that we may not know about this court case, let us know down below in the comments and we'll make an updated video about the situation. Anyways, this has been District Football, thanks again so much for all the support on the recent videos, we'll make sure to continue uploading. Anyways, leave a like on the video if you're new, I'm out, peace.